Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for watching Books and Brunch with Midtown Houston. I am Ashley Small, a spokesperson for Midtown, and I'm happy to be here with the lovely lady of, of HTX Book and Brunch. I have here today Dr. Felicia Harris, Dr. Elizabeth Whittington, and Dr. Prashima Murray. Um, thank you for being here today. Uh, I'm, I'm so great. I'm so lucky to hear about your favorite books, your top picks, and your favorite authors. Um, I want to start by um, hearing from you, Dr. Prashima Murray, about um, tell us more about HTX Book and Brunch. Okay, thank you, Ashley. We are extremely elated to be here. Please just call me Krishima. Um, And so HTX Books and Brunch was started almost 10 years ago just as a labor of love out of a group of women getting together in the city of Houston to read books and go to brunch and drink wonderful um, mimosas. Uh, the founders of HTX Books and Brunch, uh, Cynthia Carter and Tiffany Howard, they would have this application that you would need to complete. And luckily I got in in year two where I was just invited and I didn't have to complete um, this application that we all joke about. But now um, it is definitely an opportunity where women get together over a love of books and have these extremely interesting conversations about the books that we read and life and how art imitates life. Wonderful. It's so inspiring. It's always nice to have a, um, a group to converge around like-minded interests. And I know we talked about this last time some of your members were on. We had a very special guest come in the past few years. We have to talk about it. Um, I'm really excited about just the opportunity to hear more about your story around doing what you're passionate about and how you attract good things when you're just doing what you love. So um, um, Felicia, if you'd like to share about that experience, that big moment um, that you all had a couple of years ago. Oh, gosh, the big moment that we'll never forget. You know, uh, actually, this morning mm -hmm. I was just texting with Cynthia because um, when I was in grad school, they did a feature in 2012. And one of the questions said, who would you like to spend a day with out of all people? And of course, my answer was Michelle Obama. So that was such a full circle moment to find that this morning. Um, and here we were uh, seven, eight years later and a couple members of our book club, we had read the book. They went to go see her um, during her book tour and we made a Michelle Obama love letter post on Instagram. And lo and behold, her team actually found it at the same time that they were headed to Houston. And next thing we know, we were getting security clearance to have brunch with Mrs. Obama, and it was truly a life-changing moment. Well, no, I love seeing it on social media. I love even watching the conversation kind of happening on social. So thank you for sharing that with us. Um, Elizabeth, tell us about a book that you've recently recommended um, that you'd love to share with us in case we're looking for some summer reads. So one book that I feel like I read it and literally I told everybody that I knew. I posted it on my Instagram page because I was so excited about it. And it's The Beauty in Breaking by, she's actually a doctor, she's an MD, Dr. Michelle Harper. And it was such a beautiful book. It's sort of a memoir. Um, I think she posted it as a memoir. And it's just a great story about like all the difficulties that she went through and she calls them like her breaking moments but then how she overcame those and learned so much um, I'm not a big memoir person but this one I was like oh my gosh so many lessons life lessons that I love but it also had like a story feel to it which really made it an easy read so definitely it's like my book that I recommend to most people and like hey can you give me a good book and I'm like yes I can <laughs> Wonderful. What about you, Krishima? So a book I am recommending to everyone, I am in this space about love and more so like international love and it's love in color. Um, this book has um, many stories throughout the text that just shares about um, a Nigerian goddess um, and her quest for finding love. It, it talks about a young businesswoman traveling throughout mm -hmm. America and looking for love. And these some stories are mythical, some are, um, are fiction, but it just talks about love. And I feel like summer, it's hot. You're usually sitting by the beach with a nice cocktail. And who else does not want to spend time thinking about um, love, dreaming about love, and experiencing love through the lens of international eyes. 
Oh, I love that. Especially a healthy love book. Um, yes. <laughs> a book that's not about heartache. I also love what you named about um, geography, maybe the sociology and anthropology a little bit. I'm reading a book right now called The Overstory. So that's my recommendation. I know no one asks, but um, it's brilliant. And it's kind of about anthropology and sociology and this idea that nature outlives men. Ooh. So gentle with the world. Yeah, but it, ha it intertwines love and family and generational strife. And so that's my recommendation. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what's yours, Felicia? Mine is actually right along the same vein as yours, Ashley. So um, around the beginning of the year, I think shortly after we were all working our way through President Obama's <laughs> volume one, we decided to go with Clap When You Land, which is a young adult book, which you can probably see is written in verse. Um, but it also kind of tells a love story, but it's talking about family, uh, intercultural dynamics, intergenerational stories. Uh, it's about two girls who find out they are half sisters when a plane goes down and their father was on the plane and it's called Clap When You Land. So it's so good. One daughter is living in New York and the other one is in the Dominican Republic, you guys I always get it. Okay. <laughs> She's in the Dominican Republic. And so the story talks from both lenses and how they end up discovering each other and what it means to be sisters. I'm probably going to order that. I'm so glad you mentioned young adult fiction because I'm always embarrassed because I do read a lot of young adult fiction. Um, but that's good to know that you all, what, what's the overall consensus is, is um, do you feel like you ever outgrow young adult fiction? No, never. <laughs> yes. No. No. Yeah. Okay. Some of our favorite artists that we of authors that we've had an opportunity to have join us were YA authors, um, okay. local um, Liara, um, and then we think about Tiffany Jackson. Um, so we love YA authors. Okay, I love um, Nicola Yoon. Sure, okay. everything, everything. Um, the Sun is also a star. Yeah. Yes, we write. Yeah. We write that. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, what book are you looking forward to reading this summer? Summer is upon us. <laughs> Let's start with um, you again, um, Felicia. Okay, so the book that I'm looking forward to reading this summer, you just mentioned one of the author's names, and I'm going to draw a blank, but it is actually a collection of short stories by some of our favorite YA authors, including Nicola Yoon, uh, Daniel Clayton, Nick Stone, Tiffany Jackson. Mm -hmm. I'm missing two of them, um, but I'm super excited uh, about them because they have this kind of, it takes place against the backdrop of a blackout in New York, and so they tell these interconnected YA love stories. They have queer love, they have young love, all kind of different kind of love stories. So just like Krishima was saying earlier, I'm dreaming of love stories in hot sweltering weather. And those are all of our faves. So I've been waiting for that. It comes out next month. Okay, I definitely want to um, learn the name of that whenever. You have to chat it to me. It's Blackout. It's Blackout. Did I not say it? Sorry. It's yeah, Blackout. I think, say that. I think you did say that. So Blackout. Okay. I'm going to put that on my wish list. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Elizabeth, what are you looking forward to reading this summer? So I like start planning my summer reading pretty early on because I get so excited about summer because classes are out and I can finally get to read um, some really great books. So I am looking forward to Honey Girl. It's by Morgan Rogers. And uh, I picked it up and I like read the like flap of it. And it's just right because again, love story. Um, <laughs> and it's about a woman who she lives in the Pacific Northwest. She takes a random vacation to Vegas, meets a woman and they get married like within 24 hours. And then the woman lives in New York and she just decides to pick up all her stuff and spend the summer in New York with her now wife um, to kind of figure out what that looks like. And so I'm like, first off, I don't think I could ever do that, but vicariously, I'd like to live <laughs> through that in like in 24 hours, know you want to marry somebody and they happen to be wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to like live through this book and, uh, hope that, you know, that's me one day. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a, a page turner. That's what it sounds like to me. Like you want to know what's going to happen. Is that right? Like yeah. that. Um, you, you mentioned something, um, making time and kind of planning out your reading schedule. You all are so highly accomplished or scholars. Um, I'm sure you're quite busy. What do you say to people who are just like, I want to read more, but I just don't have time. Um, I hear that all the time. So what's, what's your advice? <laughs> 
I feel like for me, re reading takes away from the everyday hustle and bustle of life. Just having this opportunity to go to a world that you are not enriched in. Um, a good example is the book that I am extremely excited and I feel as if Felicia and Elizabeth would agree with me. We are all fans or stands of Stacey Abrams and her new book that's um, dropping this summer is Wild Justice Sleeps. It's a um, political thriller based in Washington, D.C. And so we're here in Houston and I'm not in politics. So like to learn about like scandal and it's more so like international scandal, like that's not my everyday life, but I have an opportunity even if it's only for 20 or 30 minutes a day to just like escape into another world. And so that's what reading does for me. I would say, honestly, um, someone gave me this advice too, is to take books with you wherever you go. And I've been doing that. Um, I have like a little tote and I am busy. I'm a single mom. So just for example, the other day I took my son to the barbershop and I was like, oh, I have my book. Right. So instead of scrolling on Instagram, which I also do for hours a day, um, whenever I can remember, I'm like, put Instagram away, pull your book out. And it works for me better when I'm outside the home. It's easier for me to just kind of switch over and read a book at a coffee shop or wait in it for a doctor's appointment or things like that. I always have a book with me. I definitely agree with what they said. I also put a book on everything. Like I have a book on my phone. I have a book on my iPad. I keep a book in my purse if I can. Sometimes the books get a little heavy. And so I don't always keep them in my purse, but I also keep an audio book. I'm so thankful for the library because it helps me with my budget. I am definitely a person who will spend all my money on books. And so you don't have to, because some people say I don't have the time and it costs a lot of money. And I'm like, get you a library card. It's free. And you can download them in the Kindle version or you can listen to the audio book. And so when I'm driving, I listen to the audio version of books. And then when I'm home, I'm like Felicia, I'll be like, here's 20 minutes while I wait for dinner to cook. Or if I'm at the salon, this is an hour under the dryer that I can read a book. And so you just kind of get your time in where you can, because once you start, especially if it's a good book and a page turner, before you know it, I've read books in a day and I'm like, what? how did that happen? I mean, it's literally because it was that good. And so you make the time for stuff that's really good. So I would tell people, get a book that's a page turner and start from there. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. And I, I like what you said, Kirshima, about like kind of the escapism, because sometimes I find myself asking, do I want to binge watch TV or do I want to get lost in a book? And I think I think the former is better, or the latter is better, rather. Um, Elizabeth, what you said made me think of um, technology versus like a tangible paperback hard book. Do you do both? So if you have a book on your Kindle, do you also have like a paperback version? Or are you saying you have different books on all the devices? Just I'm just curious. This is my own question for my own knowledge. Well, it depends. I have been known for having the paperback version and the audio and okay. The, on my book, but my, I mean, on my phone, but yeah. most of the time I'll just have one or the other, especially if it's an yeah. audio book. But if it's really good, like we read Elaine Wentworth. Wentworth. Yes, Wentworth. Yes, yes. Uh, more than enough? No, yes. more than enough. So I was all about not reading that book, but then when I picked it up, like it came on my, uh, popped up on the library app. I was like, okay. I started listening to it. I went and bought the book. <laughs> so good. I was like, oh my gosh, I need this in hardback. I need to highlight all the great things that she says. So that's me. Like I will usually uh, do the cheap way and do the library. But when it's one of those like books I can't live without, I'm like, oh, yep, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> Yeah, I wish I would have read that book in my early 20s. Like, I don't regret reading it in the past year. We, we had it uh, as a feature book, one of our book, um, brunch and book events for Midtown. But I was like, dang it, I wish I knew these things or thought of these things in my early 20s. But yeah. I give it to all my nieces and all my mentees now. Have you all read it? Um, yeah. I see you nodding. I see you nodding. <laughs> I feel like we read that. I don't. I can't recall if we read it as a book club or if like one or two of us read it and then it was just like you all have to read it. But mm -hmm. similar to Elizabeth, like my copy, I got the paperback and it's all crumpled up. And like I remember, like I would um, it, part of time that I, I'm able to read is now during my bath time, and so like the pages are wet because I would like go back and forth. So that's one of those books that is like heavily used. Good, good, good. 
Felicia, were you going to say something? I thought you. Oh, no, we read it as a book club, and I, I too, was not really a fan of memoirs. A lot of celebrities come out with memoirs, and they are ghost-written and poorly written. Uh, but <laughs> once I finally started reading her book, I was like, I am obsessed. I want to know everything about Elaine Wellsworth, and I have ever since been a complete fan. And the next time she drops anything, just sign me up 100%. Yeah, I know. She's so she seems to be so authentic. So I appreciate her sharing with us online and and through her her writing. Um, what new writers or current authors are you waiting to hear from? We'll start with you again, Felicia. Well, of course, like I just said, anything Elaine uh, Welsroth writes, I'm going to devour it. Um, I have uh, some books uh, that I'm thinking about this summer. One of them is called Get Good With Money by Tiffany Aliche. So we're just coming out of this pandemic where we were all saving money and I realized I'm spending more money <laughs> just as, since I've been vaccinated. I've spent so much money. So I'm looking forward to reading this. Uh, her book just came out. And I think I would be remiss not to mention that I actually wrote a book during quarantine as well. So I'm super excited. Uh, it's called First in the Family, and it'll be published and released in September. So I'm looking forward to my own book and seeing how this uh, process goes from the other side. I definitely want to read more about that. I'm, I'm, I'm just making assumptions, but I, so many of us, or me and my network are first generation, all the things. And so um, I'd love to read that. I'm so proud of Tiffany. I saw her posting and she was like, my book is climbing the charts. And so it seems to be doing well. So um, I'll have to touch with you see how, how it is. Elizabeth, what are you looking forward to reading this um, summer or, uh, or what you're looking forward to reading or what authors you're looking forward to um, seeing new work from? So, um, again, I'm a YA fan, like most of us, and Elizabeth, Elizabeth Acevedo, I love her so much. I was not a fan at first because I was like, verse writing, this seems odd. But the minute I read her book, it, we read we read Clap When You Land, I went out and read all the rest of her books. And so now I follow her on Instagram just waiting <laughs> for her to say, I'm about to drop a new book because I'm going to pre-order it. Uh, that's how much I love her. Just her storylines are so rich and her characters have so much depth that I'm like, I don't even know how you push all of this into a book and at the end, I can still feel like it's complete. Um, you are very talented. <laughs> so uh, I'm definitely looking forward to her. I don't know when she's gonna come out with something. If she does this summer, I would be so happy, but she hasn't mm -hmm. been um, pumping anything on Instagram. So we'll see. Okay, okay. I'm gonna be willing to look out too. I did order that book. I did not know it was on your to your list, but I, I did order um the book you mentioned earlier that she wrote. So. Um, Krishima, what is on your list? Um, so as I mentioned earlier, um, while Justice Sleeps by Stacey Abrams is definitely, I feel as if like that's the book I'm waiting, like anticipating to drop. I've also been reading, um, and reading and rereading, uh, and I have it here with me, just the inaugural poem by Amanda Gorman. Um, as just one of those books that I need for inspiration. I feel like, and this is just popped in, and somebody please correct me, is Damien Young coming out with a new book? Very Smart Brothers? Right, I don't know. Like, I feel like he's been on the, like, tweeting a lot lately and talking about, like, things that he's working on. And so maybe that's an author that I'm possibly putting in the universe. I think we're all, like, Very Smart Brothers fans, even though he's, you know, left um, the the blog, but I don't know. I feel like he has a book coming out soon, or if not, I'm going to like wish it into existence. I hope so too, because everything he's put out is brilliant. Um, yeah, so, well, good. So lots to read this summer, lots of new authors to catch up with. I did not know about many of these authors you shared today. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, where can people who are interested in learning more about your book club? I know that, um, you know, it's, it's a, quite thorough process to become a member, but if people just want to follow your updates on social media, where can they go to learn more? Um, Koshima. Oh, you can go to our um, Instagram page, HTX Book, Books and Brunch on IG. We post all the time. Um, one thing that I don't think we had an opportunity to share um, in relation to Michelle Obama this past January, February, we had an opportunity to interact with President Barack Obama about part one of his memoir. And so that was another social media 
um, experience that we had with him. And so many of our followers can learn more about HTX Books and Brunch through our IG page, which is very informative and very witty. <laughs> That's amazing. I have not been able to read his book yet, but I've heard great things about it. Okay. Well, thank you ladies so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I have some new books to add to my roster and I hope those of you who are watching do as well. And I look forward to having you back on again in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.